Our next presenter is Cultivation Terracing Indigenous Ecological Knowledge and Sustainable Diets in Rural Indigenous Community of Ecuador. Please join me in welcoming Carlos Andreas Gallegos. I would like to start by paying my respect to the traditional custodians of this land and also my special gratitude to our host and Mindy and her team. I would like to also say that my research was funded by the Brown School International Dissertation Award and that I have no conflict of interest to declare. However, I want to disclose that my community is here. My best half is one of my co-investigators and is here and the ancestors are here because in the and the end, cosmovision, they are not in the past. They are here helping us to cultivate the life. And this goes along this reflection that we must challenge the imperative civilization model that sees Mother Earth. We call her Pachamama as a pile of resources. We need her for our health. And despite that technology might bring some promises, we do need nature. It's, it has been substantiated on how important it is for our health, but we are also naturally inclined to love nature. We have, as a society of nations, uh, committed to a new round of sustainable development goals. Nonetheless, these goals won't be achieved if tenure rights are not granted to indigenous people around the world. Sustainable diets, a concept that is in fashion, is food security that does not compromise the environment by a cultural space. It's not nature, it's not culture, but both as a whole, efficient, feeding the generations through the generations. These are examples of biocultural spaces, are very efficient overall, and you can look at the literature, it's very rich, but it's not that well, well known. These are systems that are still feeding communities. If you have heard of Cusco in Peru, the Sacred Valley, they had an amazing system of agriculture. Nonetheless, they are no longer there. And as a consequence, we have to make inferences of how that system was operating through archaeology. Nonetheless, we have communities in the Andes and that can provide so much for our understanding on how to bridge cultures, our human societies, along with Pachamama, with Mother Earth. And that is exactly what we wanted to do, learn about the psychosocial part, the agroecological side, and see where we could intervene. Uh, our methodology was community-centered. Uh, we included community-based system dynamics. We did site analysis, we did biodiversity counting, we have parameters for soil health. The population is the indigenous community of Caliata in the central highlands of Ecuador. 166 people in a, living above 9,000 feet of altitude. By the way, Ecuador is the first country that recognizes that nature, mother nature, has rights. Our results, a fine array of customary institutions that are basically operated through a system of distributed intelligence. These communities are not hier hierarchical, but heterarchical. Consensus is the base, not democracy. The system of knowledge is so deep and so wide. But let me tell you, we do have also the three sister system. We have Lupino being on the margins, which prevents erosion from the wind. It, it, it becomes a wind barrier. This system of terraces recently made with drone technology has sustained its pre-Columbian and still it's very rich in terms of organic matter. One of the amazing things we, we found out uh, through the testimonials and through the research that we conducted is that the, the slope on the terraced land is barely seven uh, 
grades, whereas in not terraced land, it's like 60 degrees. And that is the European model. So it's the model that is basically eroding the land in the highland areas. Our results, we did this amazingly beautiful uh, community-based uh, activity, and we all realized this equation. If you have a healthy ecosystem, uh, it, you have diverse diets. If you have diverse diets and healthy ecosystem, you have healthy people. Nonetheless, these very small communities are on the breach of extinction, like literally. And one of the critical aspects is this phenomenon of migration and urbanization. And it's really hard to blame uh, the young people who, is look, who are looking in the city for these uh, promises of modernity. So I want to invite you. Where are our solutions? Are made in cities that are entropic, that are not sustainable by design? Or are we, doing, are we looking at this in the societies that generation after generation have been learning to collaborate and work together with Mother Nature, with Pachamama? Our discussion, this is a sustainable biocultural space. It can provide sustainable diets to the people. And we do need to work together with these communities as we are trying to do all together with the leverage of academia, with the leverage of communications. This is one of the says that the elder repeat us over and over. Wawa wawapi, that in Kichwa language means for the next generations. That's all at my end. Thank you very much.